Well, Duncan and I, like millions of others around the body of Christ and the nations of the world, are so heavy-hearted about what has been happening in Israel and Palestine in the last couple of weeks. And, you know, it's not an easy thing to talk about sometimes. You know, we're, we're moved with compassion because of the fear of many people's lives where suddenly they were living normal lives and their lives changed in a moment. Yeah, and the complexity of this, Kate, is just enormous, isn't it? Yeah. You know, let's start with Israel because you and I, we love Israel. Yeah. And we love Israel because as born-again believers yeah. who read the scriptures and spend time daily in the scriptures, it is so clear in mm. the scriptures mm. that Israel are, and the Jewish people are God's people, yeah. chosen by divine election. Yeah. And we'll get into that in a, in a little bit. And yet at the same time, we also know from the scriptures mm. that all of us, all of humanity are created by God as his children. Yeah. And so, you know, all of the Palestinians, everyone who's in Gaza are equally children of God mm. as all yeah. of the people of Israel are. Yeah. And so we have this extraordinarily complex situation mm. where, yeah. you know, we have a a nation, Israel, that has existed since 1948 yeah. in modern times, and a people who for 2,000 years were scattered all over the world and the nations because mm. of Roman occupation and horrific aggression. And, you know, had other people who had been given the land for 2,000 years mm. by God in his promise to Abraham, fulfilled through Joshua mm. uh, coming into the land. And I, I said to our girls when this war erupted, when the terrorists came bursting out yeah. of Gaza um, and murdered, uh, I think, about 1,300 innocent people, children, women, yeah. all included, and all of them unarmed. Yeah. And they just indiscriminately killed them yeah. in the most horrifically wicked way. Yeah. Our girls called, called dad, dad, can you help us explain this? Because yeah. they were reading all the backlash yeah. on social media mm. of people that were saying, you know, things that were just so hard to understand, yeah. justifying yeah. the killing of all these innocent Jewish people. And I said, and they said, Dad, you know, we're feeling really uncomfortable. What are your thoughts about this? And is it right for Israel to retaliate? Yeah. And <clears throat> when the people are blockaded within Gaza. And I said to the girls, girls, you're talking about a people who for 2,000 years were removed from their land yeah. that had been their land for 4,000 years and been given that land by God. Mm-hmm. And then God did an extraordinary miracle that's unprecedented in history. There's no other people that I can think of mm. that this happened, where God brought them back, gave them back their land in yeah. 1948. And, <clears throat> and that land is tiny in comparison to what it originally was. Yeah. But that tiny bit of land is surrounded by nations that have declared themselves enemies of Israel yeah. and are determined to completely eradicate them, annihilate them, yeah. destroy them, and so on. And, th and that is like statements made by governments mm -hmm. to that effect. Mm -hmm. And they've tried in 1967, yeah. Yeah. in 1973, uh, and so on. And yet God has mm -hmm. protected Israel. Mm -hmm. And I told the girls, girls, I think the Israeli nation has every right to defend their borders, defend their people, mm. and to declare war on any nation mm. that declares a purpose of annihilating them. Yeah, <clears throat> and the complexity is multi-layered because, you know, obviously people in Palestine and Gaza, there are people that have been living there for generations. So the the sense of belonging for those people is very real as well. And so... Yeah. You know, we've got this tension, you know, there's the word of God and the promise that God would return the Jewish people to their land. And then yet his heart 
for the Palestinian people who have been living there for generations is also great. Yeah. And and so we we have this conflict as believers. We we want to feel the compassion of God, but we realize it's very complicated and the way we position ourselves as believers has to be very Christ-centered um but also really believing that God has a plan here and he's sovereign. Exactly. And <clears throat> when you mention that God's sovereignty, because he's sovereign, yeah. you and I believe in mm. God's right of divine election yeah. and God's purpose in divine election. Yeah. And, you know, for those of you that are wondering what is divine election, mm. it's that God has a sovereign will and a right to that sovereign will mm -hmm. as our creator and that he can do as he pleases, meaning that he can choose a people, which he has done, mm. Israel, the people of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who yeah. he renamed Israel. Jacob, he gave him a new name, Israel, which means prince with God. And through divine election, God determined that mm. his beloved son, Jesus, would be Jewish yeah. and that he would be born in Israel, born in Bethlehem, as a Jewish man. Mm -hmm. And even now, mm -hmm. having died on the cross and risen from the dead, he's still a Jewish man mm -hmm. in the heavens mm -hmm. on the eternal throne. He is God as man mm -hmm. forever on his throne. Yeah. And he's going to come back to this world and he's going to uh, rule and reign from Jerusalem, whether that's if you believe the millennium, a thousand years as it is mm. in this world now, or whether you believe that, no, there isn't going to be a thousand year rule and reign. But we all know that ultimately, at the end of time, at the end of it all, God's purpose is that there'll be a new heaven that's the new earth yeah. with a new Jerusalem and Jesus and the Father and all of us who believe in Jesus are going to dwell forever and ever mm. in that new Jerusalem. Mm. And you, what's so amazing, Jesus had a plan that Jesus, um, sorry, the Father had a plan that Jesus would be Jewish and born in Israel. But yet the amazing thing is we as believers in Jesus ourselves yeah. who are non-Jewish have been grafted in That's right. to that run of the generations yeah. and we've been grafted into the vine as scripture says yeah and therefore we have taken on god's heart for his people israel by being born again and our heart also for the nations of the world and the people of the world yeah including the palestinians including the palestinians who are his children and including people that do bad things and really hurt nations you know god's heart is still full of love for them, that they would turn and see God. Turn from their wicked ways. Turn for their exactly. wickedness and see the purposes of God. Yeah, and Kate, that brings me back to that divine election. What is the purpose of divine mm. election? Why did God choose the people of Israel? Mm. And why did he choose Jesus to be Jewish? And it's, And I believe it's because of his passion of grace yeah. to reveal through his grace to reveal his love yeah grace is where you get everything that you don't deserve yeah mercy is when you don't get what you deserve mm. grace mm. is when you get everything that you don't deserve mm. and god chose israel not because they were particularly special in and of themselves in anything that they had yeah. done god chose abraham out of an idol worshiping ancestry the scriptures say and God chose Abraham through grace. Mm. Abraham believed God when God spoke his promises to him. He, he, he was, his faith was what credited righteousness mm. to him. Faith in God, faith that God had the right to choose him as an, and to build a nation through him. Yeah. And that in that grace, that choice was not because they were any more special, but that grace was for the purpose of God to reveal grace mm. so that every single human being created by God, that's most of us who are not Jewish, could also receive that same grace by honoring the grace given to the people of Israel yeah. in God's sovereign choice and therefore honoring God in his sovereign choice mm. and coming, being able to then access salvation through that same grace given to Israel that we 
would by recognizing that grace that grace could then spill over to us yeah and i just love that reality yeah. that whether we are jew or whether we are gentile yeah. as human beings we have the same access to mm. grace mm. through our lord jesus christ who is yeshua hamashiach the champion yeah. jewish messiah and we have access to god to eternal life through faith mm. in his sacrifice of himself at the cross. Mm. Oh, it's amazing. It's beautiful. And, you know, there's so much in scripture that points to wars, rumors of wars, and the end time plan. Yeah. Now, I'm no expert in any of that, but, you know, as we know, there are multiple um, ministries that are really helpful in understanding and digging the scriptures. But I think about the mercy of God that it's God's hands of mercy that are on the nations. He's the one that protects us. And, and so often when we're in a Western American European culture, we're actually quite separated from war. And so, you know, our heart has to respond in mercy that the Lord would have mercy yeah. on his people, Yeah. Uh, that he would have mercy on his children because trying to come to terms with the, outrageous nature of war yeah when we're not in a war nation a nation at war is is sometimes very hard to separate and you know as you said there was indiscriminate firing and killing of helpless women and children and the rules of war engagement were completely broken yeah and we can all see that nobody had a choice in that and nobody was given time to well, evacuate get out of the way or whatever no because so, because so hamas evil. is a recognized terrorist organization mm -hmm. it is recognized throughout the world that yeah. hamas is a terrorist yeah. organization yeah. and i think it's really important kate that we all understand that mm. there is a difference between hamas mm. as a terrorist organization yeah. and the the palestinian people and the land issue and that we recognize that you know, what happened on that dreadful day mm. was that Hamas yeah. came out and murdered, yeah. you know, what now is well over a thousand people, yeah. all innocent, every one of them innocent. It was yeah. an, an absolute atrocity, a and, terrorist atrocity. And as we know, there were U.S. citizens, European citizens living on kibbutz or visiting, yeah. you know, and... It could have been you and I, it you know, that's the thing. Yeah, and and that just lends me to say it really doesn't, it's in a sense, it's relevant because it brings it home to us, but it's also irrelevant. It didn't matter who. Yeah. The reality is human beings lost yeah. their lives yeah. because human beings that had been filled with a wicked mm. narrative yeah. of hate yeah. determined in their hearts to go out for whatever reason and go and murder innocent people. Yeah. And it, it just makes me realize, you know, it reminds me of Ephesians 6, 12, where Paul says that yeah. this battle is not against flesh and blood. That's right. It's against principalities and powers, rulers and authorities of this dark world, the evil age yeah. of this world. And, yeah. you know, the tragedy is that as human beings, people don't realize that mm. these wicked ideologies, hate-filled ideologies yeah. on, on every side, yeah. are actually ideologies that are a doorway mm. that are seeds of the evil one yeah. into the minds and the hearts of people yeah. who don't realize that they've become um, unwitting, unwitting instruments, of the, instruments enemy. Exactly. of the enemy. Exactly. And they've said yes to the enemy's plans That's as right. opposed to God's plans. Yes. And God's heart is always to bring love and reconciliation yeah. and forgiveness healing and, and forgiveness. Yeah. Whereas the opposite is that, yeah. you know, it brings hatred. And yeah. I think that's one of the challenges is how do we respond? Because there are people that are showing hatred in both directions. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Jesus taught us to love always, to serve. And he demonstrated that. Yeah. And he had enemies. Yeah. There were people around Jesus that ultimately crucified him. They were enemies. But Absolutely. Jesus just taught people to love and love our enemies maybe you can pull to lay, well great the greatest love is he who lays down his life, life. for his friends um, but yeah. matthew 5 43 jesus said 
You've heard that it was said, Mm. you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Mm. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in Mm. heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good Mm. and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Yeah. And, Mm. you know, I think right here is is the key for all of us Mm. who are not directly involved. Yeah. For those who are directly involved, I don't know how you go about interpreting this. Do you lay down your arms? Do you pick up arms? Do you fight? I don't know the answer to that. And also... Because I live in a nation where I'm not having to face that... Level of trauma. Level of trauma. Yeah. And that level of decision. Mm. But what I do know that as an American citizen living Mm. here Mm. in this nation of America, Mm. what can I do with my time the most? Do I fill it with being a... a, uh, Keyboard warrior. A keyboard warrior and going on and, and just filling the world with even more hate and mm-hmm. even more, mm-hmm. you know, taking sides and, and vitriolic uh, narrative? Or do I just lay my keyboard down and do I begin to pray for those who are at war together mm-hmm. and those who I don't understand which side is right or wrong necessarily. I'm not, I'm not God to be able to make that judgment, no. but I can pray I can boldly approach the throne of grace, yeah. Hebrews 4.16. And in my time of, in our time of need in the nations, we can pray for mercy mm. for the nations, mm. mercy for those yeah. who per- persecute yeah. us. And I think that really is, it's a call to prayer, I yeah. think more than anything. Yeah. You know, action, is it protesting? Is it standing up for the truth? I think we can present the truth without being militant activists yep. as believers. Yep. Jesus always turned the other cheek. He he showed us the way. Um, he encountered suffering. He said that we would suffer, yep. that we would take up the cup of, cup of suffering. And, and that is a very difficult one to talk about because war brings trauma on so many counts. Yep. And, and so we want to be people that would pray that God's will would be done. Yeah. And that he, his hand would be there to protect people and to heal people, restore people. And as a church, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yeah. It's always it, God's will. Well, that's that that's amazing, um, honey, that you should mention that. And and again, it comes down to this reality of God's sovereign mm-hmm. right to choose. Mm. And <clears throat> he has chosen Jerusalem. Yeah. Whether we like that or not, whether we agree with that or not, the reality is God, the God and Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm. the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has chosen Jerusalem yeah. for his divine purpose. And Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem. So we don't understand why things happen. But what we do know is that ultimately God has a purpose and he will redeem all that happens, even what happened with Jesus on the cross in Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. because God has an intention of a new Jerusalem that is going to be the most beautiful dwelling place for all of eternity, for every human being, for Palestinians, for Jewish for yeah. people like you and I, Kate, who yeah. we don't even know what our DNA is. I mean, goodness, we yeah. have no clue. We yeah. we did DNA tests and we you know, were somewhere in Europe. We're somewhere. And we don't even know. I'm from somewhere, you know, I, I my DNA test came back that I was like Turkish Jewish. I mean, how do you figure that one out? Yeah. And I think I think that's the thing, really. It's like, you know, these things point us to the reality that Jesus is coming soon. Yes. And, you know, when you see the world in turmoil, you see floods, earthquakes, and and it seems that there's something all the time. It's like Jesus said, be ready. You don't know the hour and day that I'm going to, but watch and pray and be ready. Yeah. And I I think it gives us as believers an opportunity for for urgency to make our life count 
yeah. to make our witness for Jesus count. Yes. Because God is actually desiring sons and daughters to return home. To return home. And, yeah. you know, when we go through unstable times, it makes yeah. us question who we are and what we're here for. Yeah. And, you know, our hearts are that we would be watching and praying. Yeah. And that we would know the seasons and the times that we're in. Yes. That yes. Jesus would return for his bride. Yeah. I love that, Kate. I love that. Psalm 122, verse 6. This is a psalm of David. Pray mm -hmm. for the peace of Jerusalem. Yeah. It doesn't say, if you're Jewish, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. No. Although, of course, he's writing and the context is 100% that if you're Jewish, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But this is the eternal word of God mm -hmm. to Jews and Gentiles, to all of humanity. Yeah. And God says in his word, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And he says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Mm. Wow, what a promise. Yeah. That if you love Jerusalem, your life will rest in the security of knowing that your eternal God has got you in the palm of his hand. And even if you lose your life in this mm. life, you gain it. you gain it in Christ Jesus in the next life. Mm. That death is not the end for you. Mm. Death is just a brand new doorway, uh, is a doorway into a brand new life on yeah. a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sakes, I will say peace be within you. Mm. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. And of course, we know that David is speaking about the temple at that time that was about to one day be built by his son Solomon. Um, but he's really talking about the house of God uh, as, the, as God himself, the eternal dwelling place where we, in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, our eternal Messiah, all of us, Jew and Gentile, mm. will live mm. in that eternal dwelling place called the New Jerusalem. Yeah. So, so pray for Jerusalem. So right everyone, now. yeah, we <clears throat> we pray and we stand. We yeah. stand with God's plans yeah, for the exactly. nations. And that's good. And may you, each of you, know peace in your heart yes. and know that God's hand is there. And Jesus has already won the battle. We know that's the right. ending. We know we've got yeah. a glorious future. But you know, keep your hearts at peace. May the comfort of the Holy Spirit rest upon you all yeah may you know the knowledge of his will may you know how to even stand and conduct yourself yeah and how yeah. to answer and what to say and what not to say and you know our prayer is that we as the body of believers around the world would really be able to demonstrate god's heart yeah. and and do and what walk, jesus called us and, and walk that and, journey. and walk in the love of the father yeah because I think that to me, that's the key yeah. in all of this is love looks like something. Yeah. And when we walk in the love of our Heavenly Father, we understand that He loves every human being. Mm. He loves even those who hate us. Yeah. He loves those that have a different approach to us, a different mentality, have different politics to us, mm. have different beliefs to us. Yeah. God loves all of humanity. And I think it's really fascinating that his salvation is simply that you believe, you and I believe mm. that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins as the Son of God, who became the Son of Man, mm. so that the sons of men could become the sons of God. And when we realize that, that that's open for everyone, that God loved the world, mm. that he gave his only begotten Son, whoever believes in him, mm. no matter what your ethnicity, no matter what your politics, no matter what your upbringing, no matter what your social economic status is, whoever believes in him yeah. will not perish, Amen. but will have eternal life. And there's many perishing right now in this world, and that is tragic. Mm. But this world is not it. This life is not it. Yeah. There is eternity with God that we all have access to yeah. while we're in this life through faith yeah. in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Jewish Messiah, yeah. who's the gentle, Gentile Savior 
of the world as well. Yeah. The savior of the Gentile world as well. Yeah. 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 So we bless yeah. you all. And, and Lord, right now, we just pray yeah. for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes, we do, Lord. Father, thank you mm. for your will. Yes, Lord. May our hearts align to your will yes, for Father. Israel and the nations. Yes. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. And Lord, we also pray mm. for the Palestinian people. Yes, Lord especially the people, the innocent people mm. who are living in Gaza. Lord, we pray. Yeah. We pray for your peace, your protection over them, especially those who are Christians. Mm. Lord, we ask you that you would bless all of your people yeah. in both the Gaza Strip as well as all of those who dwell and live in Israel. Lord, we pray your peace Amen. in Jesus' yeah. name on the nations. Thank you so much for joining us. And we hope you really enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on that notifications button. Also, click on the links below. We have lots of resources for you to enjoy that we believe will help you to live an amazing supernatural life in the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless. See you next time. <laughs>